Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday stream. Today we have Homesick Mac coming to uh, to join us. Uh, for those of you that have not seen the stream before, what we're going to do is talk about Notion, digital management and how Homesick in this in this case is using Notion to manage numerous different things. Obviously we'll uh, get further in how he's using it specifically for him. Uh, for those of you that have seen the stream before, let us know uh, in, the, in the comment section uh, that you're, you're coming in. For those of you uh, watching on the replay, I will get the timestamps done after stream. Just give me a couple of hours after stream to rewatch it and add all those in. Um, we've got Jonathan with us again. So Jonathan has uh, kindly agreed to be a, a co-host, so he'll be coming back every week. Just, just give us the nod on that one, Jonathan. Is that, is that true? <laughs> no, I didn't agree. To yeah, no, I crossed it. I crossed it. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, both of us will be here every week. Um, so, Homesick, do you want to uh, give us a bit of an explanation about who you are, what you're doing, what you've done type thing? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, uh, Homesick Mac is my artist name, of course. Uh, my real name is Dragon, Dragan Ruzic. I'm from uh, former Yugoslavia, which is now a part of it called Serbia. And uh, it, it, it's a messy story, right? So um, I moved to Sweden in the uh, early 90s uh, because I met my wife here. So um, then I just uh, rebuilt my mu musical career here as well. So the first uh, part of the 80s, I used to live in uh, both old Yugoslavia and Germany. And playing around, touring, playing. I'm a musician within the acoustic blues country, folk, rec time. Yeah, early stuff. And uh, uh, then I moved to Sweden and started from scratch with the, both the career and everything else. And uh, yeah, I got interested interested in, in uh, uh, computers and uh, you know getting more efficient with everything that I was doing because all I was always doing several things at the same time and uh, uh, I could uh, never just you know sit and play my guitar. I had to do something else as well. So. Uh, yeah, basically that's it. And then uh, I think I was one of the first musicians here in the area who had a, a homepage that I built myself in HTML in the beginnings, right, and everything. So, and uh, then I stumbled upon uh, Getting Things Done, uh, a book by David Dallin, and that got me hooked on, on, on uh, productivity and, you know, trying to uh, do as much as I can during the time I had at my disposal and then I realized that that wasn't uh, what I really needed to do. So it was more that I wanted to improve the quality of what I was doing and uh, to fulfill some of the ambitions that I had. And uh, yeah, so anyway, to from Windows 3.1, 3.10, right? Uh, uh, going over to Mac and Windows and I was recording a lot, I was playing a lot, touring, and uh, now when we're in the COVID situation and all that, uh, no touring so much. But at the same time, I always maintained uh, the teaching part of, of this. And uh, actually, I spent a lot of time in the UK. I used to uh, uh, be a tutor at the, uh, uh, what's it called now? Jesus. Yeah, Blues Week. It's an annual uh, uh, weekly uh, Blues Week gathering uh, by the European Blues Association. By, uh, and it's led by Michael Roach, it's a charity organization in the UK. So uh, and there were people from all over the world uh, teaching, you know, having fun, Some sometimes 120 students uh, spending a week with us. We used to be in Exeter, Northampton, uh, Bromsgrove and a couple of other places in the UK. I taught there for about 10 years. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, uh, when did you when did you first f sort of find Notion, see Notion? What's your your first experiences with Notion? Uh, well, actually, I was uh, I was on a forum somewhere, and then somebody just pointed at uh, oh, there's this uh, new app, Notion, but it's very complicated, and uh, that that was a trigger for me. Like, complicated, okay. <laughs> because uh, when when people who, who I knew, I mean, I, I knew this guy, and I know he's not very interested in, in computers at all. And uh, I thought, well, this might be something for me. Let's see what it is. So that was about a year, and I didn't know. Yeah, a year ago, something like that. And then I, um, I, I thought it was great, but I was totally into the Evernote, Todoist, 
and uh, Microsoft Office that we have uh, at my work because I have a daily job as a uh, uh, what's called a business operation manager at the study association in Sweden. That's uh, a working with uh, uh, adult education, right? So it's uh, studying circles, uh, cultural events, uh, uh, music business. Uh, uh, we have, let's say, um, 120 bands on acts only in this town that I'm working in. So we're helping them out with the promotion, uh, you know, everything that's got to do with with uh, building a musical career. So uh, right, right. So, everything, uh, every, everything circles around music and uh, uh, now lately video as well. So, oh, so you're you're making videos and storing them on Notion, or? No, I'm still storing them on YouTube. I don't trust okay. Notion for, for that kind of stuff okay. yet. And uh, But I have, uh, uh, later on when I show you guys uh, my uh, guitar retreat page uh, in an ocean. Should we jump in? You, you want to shoot? Yeah, okay, we can jump in. Great. Yeah. So let me see. Uh, that's my screen over there. Good. I recognize it. So uh, in my, my whole notion is uh, this is a root, right? Here's everything. And it's following the para system quite well, except for the archives. I don't have anything there. And the areas are based on uh, Marie Poulin's uh, first recommendation to create the database with uh, various areas of my life, right? So I have two areas that are music. And I was actually looking at your uh, uh, areas uh, uh, database, Danny. And uh, I've seen that uh, we treat areas a bit differently, uh, you and I. That was interesting. Uh, in in, and, uh, in what way? Uh, well, I uh, kind of, uh, I think that you, you, you put more things into areas than I would, right? Uh, it, it's, it's about how you treat areas of your life or areas of what you're doing. Because I could divide this into many uh let's say into more areas than i did but i know that i'm kind of I, I i easily fall into this trap of going too much into detail and i I'm, I'm in the process of trying to maybe gather things into a little bit bigger chunks and then go from those chunks let's say further on let's say if, if i just look at this uh, music teaching guitar retreat uh, uh, page uh, this is uh, the area of music teaching uh, but that's got nothing to do with the performing that's a separate area because it's a totally different game right so within uh, those uh, within this page in this area i have uh, these pages for the guitar retreat blues week and my workshops that i do they're called mac attack by the way i love yeah. that <laughs> that's nice yeah so guitar retreat uh, this is a, a yeah one level page level lower or down and then we come to this and this is a, a, a thing that i created very recently there is a, a teaser portal which is a smaller version of uh, the guitar retreat page which is only meant to be sent to uh, uh, so this would be a the main page right and it's in Swedish, but uh, this part is English. Okay, so, because I had two participants from uh, the UK and they promised to bring some more guys with them. So let's say this is uh, the way it, it, it looks basically. And this is a free videos uh, kind of a database that I, they can get to, to just, you know, see what the retreat is all about. And each video, each uh, page in the database has got uh, let's say the artist's picture who I was representing there and then a couple of uh, properties to show what kind of song this is and then there's my instructional video here right and uh, and then I put the lyrics inside and that's where the students uh, can see but not touch so they cannot edit or it's just a, a shared page with them right uh, so that's within that, but basically this is the real uh, page that my students have the access to. 
So this is the first part. This is README, and I explained to them how to uh, navigate and what kind of views they've got there, right? Do and many then, uh, of your students you know, use Notion personally? Uh, I think one out of like 35 that I had <laughs> lately. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I was, um, I mean, I, I could invite them and uh, I could uh, share the space with them. But for the moment, I know that they, uh, they're usually not so interested in, in learning new apps, or whatever. They're, they're all, uh, well, nothing wrong with that. I'm myself over 55, right? But basically, it's, it's uh, people who are about my age and even older. I'm 60 now, right? So uh, not many of them are interested, interested in what this is and why does it look like this, right? It's like, okay, let's see. I have an idea uh, to introduce them to a page where maybe we could discuss something, but we do that already on Facebook. So I'm not really sure if, if uh, the learning curve would be kind of too steep for if we want to do it in Notion. But uh, let's see, uh, what could I show you this? This is the most recent one. And uh, yeah, basically it, it, it all looks the same. It's the lyrics mm -hmm. and, uh, and the video that's uh, from YouTube, right? So, uh, so do you have uh, your YouTube channel like your your public YouTube channel and then you're you're embedding the link into the lesson it's not public basically the, the all okay. these videos are unlisted they're not private because I have problems with sharing the links to private videos they wouldn't open uh, neither from notion or, or just if I send them through an email so video needs to be unlisted mm -hmm. but not public so yeah. uh and that worked quite well right so uh i have these uh, instructional videos where i uh uh i mean we go through we go through stuff while we're having the retreat this year was the first time online so we used zoom uh, as a platform and that worked okay uh despite of a significant delay between the yeah the i was going to ask audio. about that I was going to oh, ask that because, yeah. yeah. I had a story about that because, uh, uh, I mean, you know, I had three cameras set up and I ran everything through uh, Ata Mini Pro. And inside the Ata Mini Pro, you should have this uh, uh, delay, audio delay that you can assign to a channel, uh, uh, the audio that you're using, right? And I tested that and I even made some uh, test recordings prior to the, you know, getting online with people and uh, i did the recordings and it was perfect it was great all of my videos later on when i recorded the instructional videos were recorded with the exactly same setup and i sent uh, the same amount of delay and uh it was great but what uh, on a zoom call i even tried to to assign uh, an additional delay from my mixer that I was using because I used the Tascam DR70D. It's, it's, a, it's a great little four channel standalone mixer and uh, recorder uh, that's usually used uh, underneath the camera on the tripod if you want to have more than one audio source, right? And then you can just line it out to the camera. It's, it's a perfect setup, right? So use that. And uh, I just use the delay that you can assign in uh, ATEM Mini Pro. But then I added some extra delay from the task camp, which is also possible. Uh, and, uh, but nothing helped. It was even worse. So I really don't know. And I, we're going to have a Christmas retreat in December. So I'm going to really going to be some, you know, going to do some hard testing of everything and maybe do a, a testing stream with somebody to see if, if it's maybe better now because there, now I have this uh, uh, audio fuse studio uh, audio interface that I'm planning to use and uh, maybe that will help but I don't know so that's, that's, a story that's about definitely uh, Jonathan's area of yeah. expertise. <laughs> Audio yeah, is not. I'm, I'm sure it is. Yeah. But did did you uh, send uh, uh, some? Did you do some streaming uh, with the with the uh, Atom or something, Jonathan? Uh, I haven't. No, I've been looking around for decent audio interfaces for guitar for for a while now. Often I just use acoustic now because 
this mic's powerful enough to pick up my voice <clears throat> and the guitar at the same time. Yeah. Um, so I just use it that way. And at most, I have two mics going into my audio interface. And that's mm -hmm. literally all I've managed to be able to do, which has made yeah. it work enough. But the de there is a lot of delay whenever, especially when you're trying to play together. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. I need to find that app that uh, I found a little recently. I'll share it with you and uh, let, and I'll send it to you. I'll send it to Danny and Danny can send it to you. But there was an app that I can't remember the name of. I put it somewhere in my notion, which I'll go search okay. for. And oh, I, I, I wrote down a couple of those uh, and tested this uh, Jam Kazam, but it, it, it didn't it didn't really work well. So it's difficult to play with somebody real time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when it comes to audio interfaces, uh, I can always recommend uh, 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 Scar not Scarlet, uh, the Claret interface by Focusrite, which is uh, yeah, UK. Yeah, Focusrite's based. really good, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Scarlet is okay, uh, but let's say if, if you compare them uh, in detail, then you will see that, you know, some areas on the Claret uh, line of products that they have is, is better, right? It's, it's better preamps, it's a better this initial noise that you get from the preamps from the beginning. It, it all depends what you want to, to record. If you're really into acoustic like I am, you know, then it's uh, uh, worth to invest uh, in a really, really good interface. That's why I bought this AudioFuse Studio. It's Arturia, and I've done a research for about a year, maybe. And I was this close to buying Focusrite, but um, I went uh, with this one, and it, it's really amazing. Absolutely great. Whatever you throw at it, it's great. I can recommend that. Something that's uh, just come in chat, Yusuf's uh, put something, uh, said an interesting use case would be coding or freelancing. Obviously, coding can be done in Notion. I, I'm assuming when it comes to coding, it's like the learning aspect of coding, not the uh, actual coding, because you can't do anything in, in Notion yeah. when it comes to that. Um, but freelancing, I, I'm curious, what, what's, your, what's your experience using Notion for teaching freelancing? Uh, it's great. It's great. It's much better than Evernote. Uh, the first aspect and the most important aspect is that I can share it so easily. Yeah. Uh, just take one page, share it. That's it. I did that with Notion as well. It's okay with uh, Evernote, right? And and I, and I love Evernote for for the storage, you know, workhorse that it is. And I haven't saved too much into Evernote lately because uh, I've really found a way to find these things in, in, in Notion. And actually, that's something I'd like to show you a little bit later on because uh, I'm dividing whatever I'm working on, let's say resources that I need for my freelancing, resources that I need for my work and all that. They, are, uh, they all end up in still different databases. In, in Evernote, you could just put them in the same place and then just tag them differently. I can do that in Notion as well. But uh, for freelancing, let's say, uh, it's much easier. I can show you a, a, a thing that I, I do some video production as well, because I was always uh, interested in video. So this is a project, this is a page that I share with my, uh, with my customer, right? And uh, it's, it's, it's a great guy here in Sweden. He's selling these uh, um, leather cleaning products, right? So this is our uh, mutual space. And we have one project, which is uh, the, the videos, instructional videos we're doing. And we have this database where we share uh, all the videos. Uh, we just finished the filming. Uh, these are the ideas. This is what's planned. This is what's filmed and so on, right? So it's, it's a quite uh, simple uh, uh, thing that we do. And, and uh, this is a mutual to-do list. Uh, this is our strategy with videos and social media that I created for him. And it's just a, you know, a bunch of uh, things that I recommend him to do and how we could do it. So it, it's really, really great for freelancing because this page is, uh, let's say this is our agreement, right? That uh, how we uh, do it. And then uh, the basic thing is that this is the page that I share with him, and this is for my eyes only. So here are all my notes, everything I need to do. Let's say when I'm uh, uh, editing the videos, here's everything that I just wrote down, and I know it, I have, let's say, Final Cut Pro in the one half of the screen, and this is on the other side, so I just go through that and I know what I'm doing. So it, I think it's great for freelancing. It's much easier to navigate. Uh, you can, of course, tailor Evernote 
similar way but this is so visual it's so pleasing and it's so easy to move things around that's why I like Notion for freelancing and I have kind of three uh, customers when it comes to freelancing with the video and photography and I don't want to take on anymore because uh, otherwise I wouldn't have time for my uh, <laughs> day job and my music right but uh, the guitar retreat is the main thing and that has become uh, a freelancing thing because I we did a physical uh, retreat we had it for for eight years uh, on an island here uh, outside the uh, Helsingborg where I live and uh, that was great everybody loved it but now then with the COVID situation and everything now we're just uh, uh, we agreed to do the online thing and that's where I thought okay notion I didn't have a single doubt about no notion we got to do it there no other way and it took me trust me uh, let's say this this page uh, this page took me I think three hours to put in each video because it's more than 80 videos right now right so I just needed to uh, copy paste copy paste the pages and then uh, just make sure that the, the, the links are right, that, that this links corresponds to this one over here. <laughs> That's, That's always here. useful. Yeah. <laughs> I've made yeah. that a couple of times. <laughs> oh, man. And then, uh, yeah. But it's, it's great because uh, they, they really, really appreciated this. They didn't care what it was and how I created it. I just said, hey, guys, here's a link to a web portal where you have all the videos so that you don't have to go through the playlists on YouTube because they always thought that it was, oh, man, I, I, I can't find, you know, in all those playlists because I had playlists for each year of the retreat since 2012. And then I had a retreat, let's say, a playlist for everything that's in open tunings and then open G, open D, slide. And they just thought, no, nah, this is much easier because here they can see finger picking, standard tuning. It's the spiritual, right? And it's from the 2018. And here's the key. We're playing it. Great. OK, so they just say, OK, let's see. They, they watch the video, they play along, here's the lyrics. So the, you can just dive into only this page. And uh, they thought it was great. Didn't even ask me what, what this notion in the URL was. It's like, oh, they don't care. That's the thing. When we're being utter nerds, we love what notion is and how it works and figuring out the new tricks with it. But really, oh, yeah. most people couldn't give a rat <laughs> less <dying>. like they <laughs> yeah. just don't care they're just like yeah cool it's my portal. let me do this cool i get to see yeah. videos in one place that's nice then that's about yeah. it exactly. leave it to us to nerd out about it <laughs> yeah these people yeah. behind the scenes yeah exactly so... um, it's, it's actually something interesting you, you mentioned the url so do you use fruition or super dot uh whatever it is s-o-i-o <laughs> um yeah, for yes. your for your smart URLs, yeah, you do. Yes, I do now. Uh, uh, this uh, this past week, I just decided on. Uh, there was this guy who has this uh, uh, Notion uh, made web or something. Uh, Rajat, he's an Indian developer, uh, very nice guy, and he he uh, wrote in this Notion made simple uh, Facebook group, I think. Uh, about his little website and he offers let's say uh, to fix the fruition thing for you right if, if you find it you know difficult or you know I usually uh, went halfway through the whole procedure with the with the uh, fruition thing and then you know creating another account at this other place and then connecting those and then going to scripts and all that that's where they lost me because I just don't understand that and I said okay this is this nice guy he's a developer why not helping him he charged like $35 for everything it's really a nice price for that right but then in the middle of like a just almost before I pressed the button right uh, I, I still thought okay it's still fruition can disappear uh, these sites where you have uh, lots of you know young developers doing this for the moment you, you don't know how the longevity of the whole thing right uh, and then I said okay super uh, seems like a, a serious project and I said let's say okay how much does it cost so I took this uh, uh, cheapest tier four dollars a month right and uh, Actually, I did everything with the, the uh, connection of the domain from Namecheap to them. 
I think it was like 10 minutes and everything was online. So now I have this website going and uh, it's, uh, let me see, uh, I can show you. Uh, so this would be, uh, this is connected to, to the uh, Super SO. And uh, the domain I have is guitar uh, retreat dot fans, right? And that's going to be connected to the page I showed you with all these videos and all that. And I'll, I think I'll be creating a, a bit kind of dashboardy uh, uh, site of some kind. I don't know. I'll see what I'll do with that. It's just the beginning of it. Hmm. But yes, super dot so is my choice for the moment. Okay. When it, when so it comes to the Oh, sorry, go on, Karen. I was going to say, when it comes to the dashboard, your have you have you thought about looked at design, like how you're going to design it, what it's going to look like? Uh, yes, but uh, I mean, I have let's say here, I have uh, in my favorites, you know, some of the uh, August Bradley stuff that I just took some screenshots of or whatever. There are some uh, nice layouts of the dashboards that I uh, uh, picked up from. Uh, one of the student colleagues from Marie Poulin's course because I, I took her course, Notion uh, Mastery course, and we're still on. We have this uh, bi-weekly uh, uh, Zoom talks where we can share our screens, show what we're doing and, uh, and all that. But uh, I have a very simple dashboard that I uh, go to every day. So this is how it looks. And uh, it's a... Uh, my first stop, if I get any idea, uh, doesn't matter what it's about, right? It's in this little scribble pad. And it's, it's uh, just a little uh, code uh, uh, block where I just uh, write down. This is like two, three days long, maybe. Uh, and I usually take this and sort further on within uh, Notion. But this is the first stop. And uh, these are the uh, like a main uh, links to my places that I need to see. And here is the quite usual uh, way of embedding the, the, the tasks that are filtered, right? These are only the next actions. Uh, and one that's paused, I need to uh, check something before I start working on that. Uh, my most actual pro projects, studies, this is a... a a special database where I only place things that I'm currently working on, maybe not actively like every day, but basically this is what I'm learning. That's studying a database. And then I have people who I need to contact. Uh, then uh, I have uh, the ideas for songs or licks and the big song library, which are filtered by what I'm working on right now. So these are two songs that I'm working on, uh, but I know those songs. Ideas are snippets, uh, maybe just licks, ideas, something that I just recorded a, a little bit. Uh, maybe I can just go in through that and show you, let's say. Uh, uh, I was going to say, I imagine this one being fairly long. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, it's not that long. Trust me, I, I have more than 300 uh, ideas that I listed in, in Todoist. But uh, I didn't move everything in, into a Notion yet because these are things that I uh, went through. Like, okay, I have some ideas about these songs. And it, there are so many so that I usually filter it uh, in, in, the, in this uh, dashboard so that I don't look at too many of them. These are the ideas that I'm really working on right now. So it means every time I pick up my guitar, I'm going to do at least one or maybe two of those just to go in, into those and say, okay, how can I develop this? Let's say this is a song. This is uh, all the properties that I'm using. Uh, and uh, I have these uh, choices. That's a lot to... of properties. I was just yeah, thinking yeah. Yeah, it is, because when I know what I want to do with this, you know, then uh, I can put it into more concrete things, because some of the songs are not going to be too bluesy. Maybe they will be a bit more ragtime or country or whatever. So, right. And then uh, they are usually connected to projects, uh, because I, I, I'm planning to do a live stream of, of like a Homesick Mac home show, right? Just whatever I was doing with Eight Minute Pro, just put, put it... Uh, to YouTube directly. And uh, let's say this is the uh, 
the original version of this song and this is uh, me kind of uh, going through some ideas that I had and I recorded that uh, very fast and uh, that's how I work with songs but the big song library that's big that's right now at uh, more than 150 songs that are listed here this is uh, the main view all but I can uh, let's say filter it to what I'm working on now right those two it's the same as in the main dashboard uh, and there are also songs that say if no I'm gonna be playing with uh, a band let's say a swinging hair rider song okay let's see if we're gonna do some live things so these are the songs that we can play together right so uh, yeah that's the way they're, I, they're very I specific it. views for what you're looking for by the sounds of it uh, yeah I mean in this uh, I like uh, I like the properties because uh, some people are like, oh, that I need to scroll down to come to the content of the page. Yes, okay, but I do that gladly because this gives me so much clearer picture of what I want to do with this, right? And uh, the relational databases don't even be, they don't have to be populated. I don't have to connect them to something, but it, it's very good because let's say I had this idea when I was planning some gigs and all that, uh, to have a database with gigs and then I could connect them to songs, which means that if I pull out, let's say, this cafe LA with, 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 with this guy, then I know that here's a set list, right? Or let's say all the songs that I maybe plan to play with him. And let's say, okay, I have 20 more, right? That's a lot of stuff here. But then I can also create a, a property that's going to be just a set list and then just connect the songs that I really need to have on a set list. And I actually had this open uh, in my mobile phone while we were playing. And in the breaks, I just went through it. I was like, okay, let's do the Big Road Blues. Okay, we'll do that. And uh, that's it, right? So these are some, some simple to-dos that are not big enough to that I put them in, into my master, master uh, task database, right? Just stuff like this. And these are the guys who I was playing with. So I needed to remember the names so that I can you know, turn around and say, oh, well played. Uh, Sorry, what was the name? <laughs> Never do that in a professional <laughs> situation, right? So, and then uh, in, in the end, we, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, that that that's the that's the most important thing. I mean, if, if you change uh, situations where you, where you play live with people, you can at least you know do the effort of remembering the names. Yeah, so true. So, um, tools and tech said something in chat. Um, something to do with the aesthetics. He said, "I'm planning. Uh, I'm planning Thanksgiving currently, and I already have a comment from people that uh, they didn't know what it was. And love the overview. Of, so. uh, meal planning. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great it, I mean, it's it's one of those things with, with Notion. Like you can." You can look at Notion. Yes, it can be complicated when you're looking at lots of databases and formulas and code blocks and stuff. But yeah. when when you, when you bring it down to the the bare the bare dashboards or the minimum information that you need to see, it, it's yeah. so clean and it's hard not to make it clean. I think you have to go out of your way to make it hard to to read. Yeah, um, well, it's all absolutely. about making it making it readable for you, isn't it? Yes, and that's why I try to keep this kind of structure that I have only these main databases and th these are actually now pages with the databases inside. And let's say this resources uh, is uh, something that I really like because I have it's so easy to find. It's right here when I go to Notion everything and I just open it like this. I go to resources. That's where I'm most of my time and this is what I uh, described earlier because I have let's say this is inbox notes ideas this is a database where everything that I first put into scribble right this uh, code block uh, that's when it end up, ends up into this this is uh, not so big and uh, I try to keep it under like 25 and then I sort it further on into into one of the others which means either it's going to go to Knowledge Hub, which is like a, a big pile of, yeah, Resonance Calendar by Ali Abdal or Marie Poulin's uh, Knowledge Hub. It's 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 a it's a large database of, of lots of stuff that could be sheer knowledge, something that's not so connected to whatever I'm doing, whatever. But let's say you're here, Danny. Here, you see, 
All right. Yeah. Examples by Danny Hatcher. Right. So, uh, and then I'm just waiting for my stuff now. Just yeah. Keep looking. Yeah. Yes, mine's going to be there too. <laughs> then, then this uh, swipe. This is uh, a database where I only keep what's uh, uh, hardware or software that's interesting for me. Either I'm going to buy it, or I, I, I can I can filter it to, to in different ways. But basically, uh, let's say uh, status. This is uh, kind of cool. This is on my wish list, right? Which is always quite large. And uh, this is something that I, I'm considering buying soon. And uh, some of the stuff are both on wish list and to buy soon. So it's not so many actually. But uh, uh, that's what the swipe is all about. And here, when I, when I told you, when I showed you this, this is the guy, Notion to website, Rajat. Notion to website.com. So if anybody feels intimidated by fruition process and whatever, here's a guy who can help you out for like $35. And I think it's, it's really nice. So I'm, I'm curious with your notes. So you've got, essentially it goes into your scribble, scribble pad, then goes yeah, into first. your notes and then goes into your knowledge hub. Uh, basically it, it goes from scribble to the knowledge hub or to wherever I wanted to go. Maybe sometimes just in the task list. Right. So how do you so, decide what goes in scribble and what goes in notes? That was yeah. my next one. Yeah. And that's my first one. <laughs> it's like the first thing is basically I put in Scribble the things that I don't already know where they should go. And that's like, a, oh, shit, uh, I need to get organized again. So and sometimes I just don't have the energy sometimes. And uh, well, I can actually show you um, Scribble pad. Here it is. Let's say this is uh, I look at this before I check the to doist for the day. Right. Uh, this is a deal with my why uh, where I'm leasing my my computer and some cameras or whatever in my uh, little company and I know that I need to have this into my uh, personal finances into my uh, uh, company finances somewhere to put it so that I know okay on uh, 31st of October 2021 is going to be the last payment for for let's say this item Right, so I, I need to, to, to sort this. And then some other things are like a retreat mail that I know that I need to send to my students, but I was waiting for this website to, to get active, this retreat fans, right? And so I couldn't do anything about that. Basically, I can, I can just put this away right now and right here. That's, that's nice. And uh, let's say this is something new that I just learned about for the YouTube, uh, for the uh, thumbnails. Uh, this should be, let's say, uh, the best size in pixels, right? Okay. Hmm. Should I put it in, in, uh, in knowledge? Maybe I should create a page within uh, my studies about YouTube. I think I already have one. So maybe I could just put this there. And this is this is cool. Maybe I could just show you uh, very fast in, in the studies. This is what I'm working on. And uh, let's say the status shows me exactly what I'm working on right now. It's color finale. It's a plugin for Final Cut Pro that I just bought. And I just edited a, a, a video this afternoon. I was very pleased with the results. And basically, uh, this is videos app. Also something I'm working on new. Uh, Final Cut Pro, let's say if, if I open this, here's the knowledge about Final Cut Pro, which doesn't look nice here because I <laughs> screw, screwed up this when I was on my iPad. And uh, don't do anything on your iPad that you wouldn't do at home, uh, whatever. <laughs> but uh, so, see, I need to make some, some order here. But basically, th this is something that I need to decide on. I love the toggles, but if you, if you see, let's say, uh, if you only have a, a, a bookmark, then it's easy to click on that and it's going to open in, in the web browser. But if you have some knowledge, maybe some notes and, you know, whatever bullet points you need to write down here, then it can get messy when you have it like this. And you, even if I just close this one and open up like this, maybe there it's too many columns. Maybe I should just put them all beneath each other in a structure that would go, that this could be just headers, right? All these. Uh, but basically, this is, I, I, I gather a lot of information about, let's say, and something that I'm working on. Logic Pro X, uh, that's also a great. Uh, uh, here I have uh, this kind of structure, right? I just put everything into the scrolling list. And it's basically easier for me to find. So I get stuck 
uh, in, in logic and some things, I go to the studies first. And uh, then if I don't find it here, then I'll go to, on YouTube and try to find it, right? So... Uh, Why don't you put those ones in doing. columns as well? Uh, these? Yeah. Uh, because I had this bad experience with the, with the, with the logic, uh, no, with, with the Final Cut Pro, where I had these columns, and uh, I thought it was uh, too narrow to watch, right, and to read. I don't know. I'm still not. I keep things to two columns max normally. You do. Yeah. Whenever I do something, it's two columns. Beyond two columns, you end up having problems. When you have a really big, I know we were talking before, like you have a big screen. It's fine when you got a big screen. You can like have five, yeah. or six, seven, eight, nine columns, and it's fine. Maybe exactly. not nine, but like on a smaller <laughs> screen. <laughs> <out there. laughs> exactly. Oh, I forgot to put this into the just now because uh, I just bought this two weeks ago, man. So it's, uh, it's there. Oh, somebody's got a dog. That's Danny. Danny's guilt face. It's like, yeah, that, that was me. Oh, great. Show, show, the, show us the dog. Oh, she's downstairs. She's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, she's well away. But yeah, <laughs> she's probably barking at something outside. Oh, I need the mic, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> doesn't matter. Oh, here's a database. Actually, maybe I could ask you guys. You're really prolific. Uh, with uh, with Notion and uh, like you're my role models, man. And uh, here's here's the thing. This database is linked from another uh, uh, workplace. So they say this is my personal and this is my 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 uh, my work, uh, my day job thing. And uh, we have um, a couple of projects that we cooperate with, uh, and they you know, my colleagues love it. It's great, but the the this database, I, when I was um, thinking about streaming uh, for my study association, I created this and just, as uh, John just said, two columns, right? So here we are, two columns only, and this is great. And uh, this is divided into hardware and software about streaming. This is where I was learning about 8 to Minute Pro, about Ecamm, uh, OBS, and whatever I wanted to do, and uh, it just kept me going. I If I should credit Notion for something, then it's this about streaming because I could really sort every information I needed. It's in the right place. I have one click to get there and it's just amazing. But it's it resides here and actually it should be in my other place. It should be here. So I've tried to just take the, the whole page and just move it, right? If I'm here and I just go to uh, move to and I don't think I can move it to, to my, let's see if I can do it now. So, let's see, wh where did it end up? It private pages, up it'll be in your private, private pages. Yeah. And all the way down, right? Should be somewhere. Somewhere there, it's there. <laughs> there it is. Okay. It's there. Uh, so now you'd be able to move where? that the way you want. So you're actually on the page right now. So if you just yes. click inside that page, you can move it again to wherever you like. <clears throat> exactly. All right, let's see. Uh, move to, uh, let's see. Uh, two, 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 two. Where should I put this? Streaming. That should be, let's say, let's move it to studies for the moment. That sidebar is scaring me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same. Yes, I know. Good. I, I don't so, know whether you've seen much of my uh, my space homesick, but uh, no. I, I think I have like three pages in my sidebar max, and I, it's never open. <laughs> in your where in your in your private? It, it, total like in favorite total. workspace. Oh. Yeah, I, I have I have my dashboard and then my main page, so I have two pages. Okay. Well, I actually, <laughs> I, I I have to tell you, I scaled down the favorites uh, to uh, this many because I almost never open the workspace and Notion everything, which is basically here that everything resides in, right? I usually open my favorites and just keep the rest closed. This is just for learning about Notion. I just saved a lots of lots of stuff here. And uh, examples, Danny Hatcher, here you are again. And uh, uh, Jonathan, yeah. where, where, where are you? <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was waiting for you to say that. I actually, I actually, I went to see Jonathan's. I, I even found your 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 private well, private website, which you don't put on either 
uh, uh, Twitter or somewhere else. I mean, you have this uh, uh, web page about your Notion business, right? Consulting, but your your personal page is kind of hidden somewhere. It's something with a uh, uh, Jonathan. Uh, J J J V or what's the oh what's that's, the URL? My, that's my old music website J Stuart Music yeah, yeah exactly I found that one as well yeah. wow that's still cool. that's still ranking that's impressive Sounds like that's still open like that's still online <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so basically um, this is so smaller right? the YouTube channel is linked in the description of the video um, so if anyone is interested uh, you can have a look at what John's put up on YouTube and I assume John there's links to go elsewhere from YouTube Do oh you yeah know? probably yeah <laughs> Actually, I, I, I was I was curious about you know what, what you do music wise and all that because I, I, I know you have this uh, 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 consulting thing that you're you're uh, you know, selling and uh, it's kind of interesting. I'd like to, to see more of that, what you do, but more from the, you know, in the back end to see how you're doing everything. Oh, that'd be an interesting stream. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'm actually working on the, the back end of my kind of all of the management side. Of, behave, Danny. Just looking at the time. <laughs> how long have you been working on that for? <laughs> I got an itch. <laughs> um yeah i know i've been working on this in a while and this is a lesson to everybody okay. don't spend so long trying to figure every single thing out otherwise you get nothing done there's a lot to say for the taking action instead of trying to figure out the best parts of everything but i do have a lot put together yeah. you know my main uh problem or, or dilemma is always uh to decide between so many ideas that I have. If I if, if I would jump on every idea that I get, I would jump on at least 20 things every day. Yeah. The, those ideas may be within music, photography, whatever, but like a f five or 10 years ago, if I would, you know, sitting around here and, and I had to do some things, write something to deliver something to write uh, or whatever and i just got this idea for a song or, or for a lick or something i just throw everything i just play it right uh, i didn't have any kind of focus so whatever came to my mind and had the strongest uh, you know signal and impact for the moment it was like oh i was a procrastinator on steroids man i just jump on everything but later on i, I needed to distinguish between okay wait hold on man you, so you know you have your your you have your goals, you have your, you know, objectives and uh, some things that I really want to accomplish. And now the most important thing is to, to land this, let's say, guitar retreat when it comes to music. When it comes to videography, I have two projects, one that I need to edit a lot. And for that, I need to learn even more about both uh, audio and video and uh, about Final Cut Pro. And uh, so it's it's kind of it's it's a mixture, but I need to some kind of somehow every time I, I jump on something, I need to answer at least three questions, right? So it's like, okay, do I really need to do this now? Where it's leading me, and how does that align with my bigger goals, right? And I don't even need to go to Notion to see my goals or whatever I'm planning or or want to do. I know I, I have those in my head, so I just kind of try to be more disciplined. No, but, but it's difficult uh, because I used to be a freelancer for like 30 years as a musician, you know, and, and I only had my tours and, and nothing else. Those were the days when you really could do that. You, you didn't need to uh, just lost my Bluetooth uh, connection. Just give me a second. It will come back in a second. I know. OK, it's back. Good. So, uh, you know, and, and uh, only about 15 years ago when I was like 45, 46, I, I got my, my day job, you know, usually people start by getting a day job and uh, uh, yeah, and maybe later on do the music part on the side or somehow, but I, I was a professional musician for, for many, many years before I started like working and that was only because of my kids, because I wanted to stay at home more and not just tour around. And that's I where I started, I, yeah. I was going to say strategic ignorance. Uh, is something oh, yeah. that, yeah, like I, I did a blog post about it a 
uh, I don't know whether I've published it or whether I've written about it. Um, but but the idea of yeah, it, it's in Notion. It's it's all planned out in Notion. Um, but those two words, strategic ignorance, the the idea that you you know that you're not going to learn that thing. So either you're deliberately not going to learn it or you're mm. deliberately not going to try and retain it. So it's almost like exactly. you, you're deliberately forgetting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it, it, it frees up one, like your, your, your mental, your, what's it, psychic bandwidth um, for, for thinking creatively and focusing on tasks. Um, mm. But it also gives you that, that sort of freedom to go, actually, I don't need to remember all that stuff anymore. I can focus on this rather than having that little that little niggle in the back of your brain going, I should really be working on that thing or exactly. thinking about that thing. You just yeah. get but rid that's, of it. But that's what both Notion and Evernote for that matter and to do is to whatever to do app is great for because I don't have to do deal with something now. I can put it into a trusted source or, or a trusted kind of bucket, right? In my case, now it's Notion, right? So, so uh, I just put it into my ideas or into my squirrel pad or, or if I know what I'm going to do with it, I can put it in my to-do list, but I don't have to assign a date to it because I go through my to-do list like every week anyway. So it's, it's like uh, I'm trying to do that because I know that people procrastinate either because, let's say, a task is too daunting, too complicated, too big, and you just do something else instead, or is it's so easy that it's, I can do that tomorrow. It's no problem, right? But as long as you don't align that to a bigger picture or a you know, larger goal or whatever, uh, I, I don't know. It's it's uh, right now. I, I okay. I, I'm wondering how how do you guys uh, cope with the procrastination? How how do you uh, set focus? I've I've seen. Uh, I mean, you're very prolific on social media. It, you know, you're there all the time. <laughs> and uh you know you, that's you're, that's you're recording these videos danny like, like crazy you know they're just you're spitting them out it's it's incredible what, what kind of uh leverage you've got but how do you how do you uh manage the time and whatever you know? so uh there's 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 a lot of theory behind the my behavior um so my i don't know whether you know this but my my higher education. Uh, so I've done three years in sports coaching and two years in strength and conditioning. Yeah. So all, all five hired is is both based on coaching, which is psychology, psychology, pedagogy, and that sort of thing. Um, my dissertation that I'm actually doing a video on at the moment uh, is about behavior change. So I I know the theory, the methods quite well. Um, but when it comes to the system that I use in Notion, it's th this sounds bad. I actually have quite a lot of free time um e even doing all that i do because mm. i i batch my tasks which is one thing that i i do um mm. so all tasks that are similar i do them all together so i sort of get into a flow state yeah um i have my tasks my task list i sort yeah. them by priority so the task that i need to do earliest is at the top and then i work my way down and mm. when i'm capturing tasks they automatically go to the bottom of the list unless they're attached to a project. So okay. if they're attached to a project, then because of the way my task database is sorted, it will automatically jump up the list. So if I'm doing a video, for example, that's due tomorrow, um, that's really that's really quick. Uh, but yeah. if it's due tomorrow, all the tasks related to that will be at the top. If I suddenly remember, oh, I need to do a task for that project, I add it to the list and then I use the template to import the relations and that will jump to the top because it's priority. So it's automatically sorted. Yeah. So I don't have to think about how to prioritize my tasks because once it's in, it's done, it's prioritized for me. Oh. Um, I also don't have to worry about uh, batching tasks because that's all done in my, I guess you could call it like half review, half planning process. Mm -hmm. So because my areas are dashboards, this is sort of, Kind of where we differ slightly my yeah. my area is a dashboard of one specific thing so youtube is an area um blogging is an area facebook is an area they all come under the content marketing which which would you class as an area um mm -hmm. but i split them up so i can see the dashboard views mm -hmm. then i can review each area at different frequencies which in this case would be planning so youtube is like every week bloggings every two weeks i think um, and again, I don't remember all the numbers because it's in Notion. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. 
but when when I need to review them, I can then put all of the tasks in into the next week or the next two weeks. So essentially, I take five minutes to plan out one week's worth of actions, and it's just so quick. Uh, and yeah. then because it's all batched, when I'm actually doing those tasks, mm. they're all very similar. So it doesn't yeah. take that long. No, so the the idea of inbox zero for your emails, I I have. I kind of have that principle with my tasks. Uh, so my task database, very similar with uh, with yourself and how you've done tasks. The tasks that are either related to a project or have have some meaning, some purpose to them, yeah. I'll put in my task database. If not, they just go in my scratch pad at the side and I may action them, I may not. They sort of just sit there until I've got nothing else to do and I look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Good, good. Yeah, and then and then for for capturing information, so ideas and notes, I have a notes database for that. So any idea that I have when it when it comes to maybe a YouTube video or a blog post or something I saw on social media or something I've captured from an article or a podcast or anything, all of that goes into my notes database, and then I can sort them to go to the area. So when I review the area, I don't I don't lose any of those notes. They appear where they need to appear. Mm. Um, and yeah, it, it just yeah. means that I don't forget them. Okay, because it's similar to what I do with notes, because in the notes database, I have a property with a relational database that can both carry me to the area, to a project, to uh, the goal, and uh, that's also something. Uh, but I still haven't really, really moved from Todoist. Uh, when it comes to like an everyday small task, basically I'm trying to to uh, move everything in, into Notion and then just keep these small things like you know throw the garbage or a shopping list whatever. Maybe I could just keep that into Doist because I don't know. I've been using it for so many years and I like it and yeah whatever. But uh, yeah. Tools on text. Someone that's well, I don't know whether he's still in. He commented earlier. Bass. Uh, he's similar. He he does a lot of stuff in Notion, but he still uses Todoist for his his tasks. I don't know whether yeah. that's changed or not, but he came on stream. Yeah. Must have been about a month ago now, and he did almost everything in Notion, but he still yeah. kept it Todoist. Maybe yeah. because he's been using it for so long. Right. It's but Danny, you have uh, 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 you said some tasks that you have are not connected to projects initially. Maybe they don't have mm -hmm. to be. Uh, but my, my, I saw my salvation in Notion that I, if I create a task, I do need to connect it to a project. Otherwise, I'll, I'll forget it or it's just going to be there or, or I'm gonna, just going to put like 10 tasks as a prior one before I decide what to do with them. But they're just nagging at me and I'm not really doing anything about it. So my, my medicine is to, to connect them to the project. As a first step, so you, so you still have some tasks that are not connected. Whoop! Yep, I was I was sharing my screen and it's just like yeah, sure. throwing throwing everything there. There we go. Uh, let's move streaming right over there so we don't get the 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 infinite. infinite thing. That's yeah. that. That's that. Let's bring up the right notion screen. Uh, move that over there. Let's come off of this dashboard. Oh, it's taking its time. Yeah, it's because I've got two different size screens. So when I move it to one screen, it's suddenly got to shrink itself and readjust. Right. Yeah. So there we go. Notion's loading. That's good. Let's bring me there back on screen now. There we go. So you can see here all these tasks with question marks are their tasks that don't have a project. So you can see it's empty here anyway. Uh, so these are so John talk. Mm -hmm. This is about. Um, podcast, which we'll talk after stream. So this is a task that I know I'm I need to do. Optional task. <laughs> yes, you're an optional task. Okay, I get it. I get it. Fine. Fine. Uh, Poor John. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, drug. That that looks really bad. That's for it my really, eyes. It does. <laughs> that looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's prescription oh. drugs for the infection that's in my eye. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We're on a live stream. We understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So and and that's a uh, it's it's something I need to do. Uh, but I I still have enough uh, tablets and drops for the moment. So it's it's not a priority or anything like that. Um, okay. And these are just 
these are tasks that I want to get done when I've got a bit of time. Um, yeah. And this, again, is one of those things because my birthday is coming up and my parents are like, what are, you, what are we getting you or how can we help? And I'm like, I don't know. So that's that's a little bit of sort of like research in there. Then yeah. if I have any other sort of like things that come to mind, when I quick capture, where is my phone? Oh, no, I've lost my phone. Oh, it's somewhere. Normally it's there, but it's not. Um, so quick capturing, I don't actually use Notion for quick capturing because Notion on the phone is relatively slow. Um, yeah, so I use just voice recorder. So voice, uh, like I open up my phone, like obviously use the lock-in uh, and just voice record and just talk to my phone. Uh, and then where's my mouse gone? Uh, and then you can see here, this is a, a daily reminder daily track and daily reminder just to look at all of those those notes and what i'll do is i'll, I'll add all those notes in this little scratch pad over here mm. um so they're down there if if i think okay that's a task i want to get done i will just drag it and put it into yeah. my task database now that's practical that's really great that's great um if it's a note then i can just drag it up into my notes database um and then if it's just something that i don't really know what to do with similar to your scribble pad i will just leave it there yeah um, yeah. Because this is where I live. This is my dashboard, and you can see these yeah. are all the tasks I was I was out most of yeah. the day. <laughs> um, so how you can ma see how many tasks. How many tasks do you have if you don't filter them, Matt? I mean, do you have a kind of limit somewhere? Okay, I'm not going to have more than hundred tasks or whatever. Um, are you talking like for a day or in no, total? No, all to all together in total, because some people uh, create tasks uh, uh, like you know, a couple of times. Um, a day or maybe let's say 20 tasks a day and then they do them and they just you know tick them off and they're done and they have filtered away in notion but you know you can end up having like 500 tasks that are done so so how so, do you cope with that it's funny i about three weeks ago up until about three weeks ago i deleted all of the tasks that i'd done um so it didn't clog up the database changed. yeah I, I i said this on stream Mm -hmm. I said this on stream. Um, so up until about three weeks ago, I deleted all of my tasks. Um, yeah. That that's why I did the hundred thousand test thing, John. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just I just thought you still deleted it. No, 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 no. I've kept them. So so now I've kept wow. every single task for the last like three weeks. Um, so this is my task. This is an area that so you can see in my dashboard areas yeah. tasks. So this is my task area. Um, but it's also holding my master task database, which is here. Yeah. Um, this is filtered for recently done. So these are the tasks that I've done today, which mm -hmm. is not that many. You see, I've done a, a load of miscellaneous things um, and then a couple Slacking. of events. Sorry? Slacking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one thing right here was like six hours long. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the stream as well. The stream's been what? an hour already yeah. um these yeah. are all the tasks for tomorrow uh and that looks like a lot on this is on top of the tasks that are currently in my dashboard so you you've got to so imagine like all of this will appear on my dashboard tomorrow um yeah. so it'll be all of those added to <sighs> wait for notion to load added to all of these um yeah. so it will it will look like a lot but a lot of those tasks are very quick to do um, so I know, for example, this editing is going to take, uh, that's probably going to take hour, maybe an hour and a half. Scheduling is only going to take five, 10 minutes. Thumbnail is going to take five, 10 minutes. So those can be done quite quickly. Yeah. This is like a, a one, two minute task. Th that's a long one. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that's, that's the case of being going to <laughs> Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a long task. Um, and then all of these tasks for tomorrow. This kind of comes into the, the capturing aspect of notes and ideas. Um, so you see, this is the project this task is related to. So all of these tasks are different tasks, even though they look yeah. like duplicates, but they're all related to, these are all blog posts, these are all LinkedIn posts. Um, yeah. And they are all, so this is essentially a task made from a note that is now related to a project. Did you grab that? Yeah. So if I come into here very quickly, so you can see this is the project that this task yep. is related to, which yep. it's, it's literally just a blank, a blank, a blank reminder. Uh, 
and when I go into the project, I don't know if this one's going to have a note connected to it. Oh, it does. Good. Um, so this is the note. So essentially what I've done is I've captured a note and put it in my notes database. Mm -hmm. And then when I've come to review the LinkedIn area, the note has been there. And then I've created a project from that note with the link um, here. And then I've created tasks from that project, which I can okay. then make appear in my dashboard. So I've taken an idea, turned it into a project, and then I've made actionable tasks for it. So nothing really gets lost or forgotten. Yeah. If we scroll down, you can see my task calendar. So this is going to show you every single task uh, across the board. And you like that one, I've got three weeks and one day until, until it's due, two weeks, five days. That one's tomorrow, you can see. Yeah. Um, and these are all the tasks that I have planned out for next week. So I, right. I don't have to do anything next week when it comes to planning tasks mm -hmm. uh, because it's already done. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I will have planned tasks for next month as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah, there you go. So that's the first week of October. All <laughs> There you go. So all of these tasks have been pushed ahead of time. So I don't have to worry about them anymore. So you can see these are all like posts that have been made um, and things. So I, I planned everything out ahead of time. And then yeah. when it comes to the area review, when I'm making those projects, those new tasks will be created and I can push those ahead of time. So it allows me to keep ahead of time. So I'm, I think I'm like two weeks ahead on YouTube videos. Um, so if something does happen, I, I don't know, I go to the hospital or my internet breaks, who knows? Yeah. I know I have content for at least two weeks. Uh, so there we go. This is a this is an example of. So these are notes that I will have grabbed in my dashboard and put in and filtered for YouTube. So they'll appear here. Yeah. Then when I go into there, I can then make a video from there. So it will turn into the a project, and it will come here. And then when I've decided yes, I'm going to make it into a video, I then drag it down and add a date to it. So you can see mm. these are all the videos. And so each that, video is actually a project. Yes. Yeah. That's that's one of my things that I actually wanted to ask you guys about. Uh, but you, know, you just carry on. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I can talk. I mean, I could talk about my space for hours because it's rather large. I mean, I, I built yeah. the fundamentals of my space and it took about three hours. <laughs> this this video that you made on a master master task uh, database or task lists uh, on YouTube, that's on my list now to to watch next to see uh, if I can you know, grab something from there. Because I, I like the, your idea of not using the sidebar at all. And, and you just have this uh, kind of a global block menu thing. And uh, that's it that you have on every page if you want. So so th that's yeah. that's a nice solution. It's a really, I think you're the only one who, who, who does that, right? I'm not the only one that does it because I know a lot of my subscribers uh, now use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I okay. didn't see anyone do it before me, um, but I don't want to say it's my idea because I don't know. Um, but I haven't seen anyone do it before me. And I know some people, Jonathan, have adopted it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, John, wh why don't you share your screen, how, the, your Notion setup? Oh, mine's boring. And mine's actually very similar to Danny's these days because I've kind of taken Is on it? a lot of what Danny, what Danny does. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, okay. So no, when, when it comes, I was yeah, going to say when it comes to additions to my space, I will mention like I'm I'm constantly adapting and changing small things in my workflow. So I actually had a when did we talk, yeah. John? Tuesday? Was it Tuesday we spoke? Don't remember. It, it was sometime this week, um, yeah. and there was, a, there was a couple of things that I've sort of really small tweaks I've changed with a couple of the templates, just yeah. to speed up my workflow. And like this is something new. Some of you. That have seen my space before. This is this is my solution to quotes, daily quotes. Um, so I have. If I come into here, do you do you look at quotes, homesick? Excuse me. Do you, do you do you have like daily quotes or things that you you go uh, by? Or no, I just have one one little thing on, on my daily uh, on my uh, dashboard, uh, and these are. Let me see. It's. Smart, I call it a uh, smart ass. It's just a little page. Smart ass with like three 
kind of quotes. Nothing is as permanent as uh, the, the uh, occasional and uh, nothing is more serious than a joke and nothing is more literate, literate than an irony if it's a good translation to english <laughs> yeah when, when, when it talks about something that's it's literally this and that but uh, no, nothing is more literate than, than irony right yeah so those three things i have uh, on my dad but basically no 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 daily quotes no okay so i previously I, I didn't i didn't do the whole quotes thing um but because uh i'm in my review section now you see a review page yeah. Because I use, or I used to use a lot of flashcards. I had this flashcard database, which I've done a video on space repetition. Um, and I've added this section quotes. And I don't actually think I've shown John how I've done this. I know I've told him about it. Um, oh, and have... I, have, I have, I have, okay. So it's it's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a wacky workaround um, to get daily quotes to reoccur. Uh, but you can see here, we've got a date for each quote, and then we have a review date for each quote. And these will cycle around. So every time I add a quote, it will cycle through. So when I started, it was just like the same one over and over. And then I had two, and then one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, and now I'm slowly adding. Um, and I'm not going to explain how it works because it's, it's a bit of a... A, a, a bouncing relations to get the roll-ups to to work but essentially what it allows me to do is have one quote um per day and that can just show up here and that quote ne doesn't necessarily have to be a quote it could just be something to remember so this is what happens to be up there today what got me here yeah. won't get me there and that was that was actually so i read seth seth godin's blog um whew, months ago um and i made a note on it and then from that note, I made a blog blog post. And then that blog post, I saw that in my August summary review. Um, and like the, the fourth time I'd seen the same words, I thought, oh, yeah, mm. this is pretty cool. And so that's my words. But I, I, I phrased that. I like I came came up with that. That's what came into my head after reading the same thing four times. Yeah. Because I because I've sort of like seen the same note over and over again. Um which is how my system works. So whenever I capture anything, I always, I, I think I see the same thing about five times over two months. So I, e even if, even if the note, when I first saw it was just like this couple of words, when I, when I see it the second time, I may have like a week to think on that, or I've, I've processed something else. I've seen something else that can relate to that. So that I, I can make connections over a period of time. And that, that's where this quote came from. Um, and it's very similar with all of my other notes. Uh, I, I can make connections between notes months gone and months in like in the future because I, I'm constantly sort of like reviewing them and, and different different times. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. It's a very neat setup you got. It's great. But this with with YouTube uh, YouTube ideas, uh, let's say um, Maybe I could, uh, next time when I share the screen, I, I might show you my Evernote window where I've gathered everything. Oh, you got me on here? Okay. Yeah, I've just put you up. I, okay. I, I have access. I've been flipping between the two. Okay. Uh, can I change what I'm sharing? Yeah, you should be Which able part? to. Uh, no, I'll just, I'll just because I, on, my, on my screen, I see Evernote, but on your screen, I saw my no Notion. Yeah, Notion. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop sharing and then share again. And then I'll just... Uh, application window, dashboard, ideas. Here. So this should work now. While, while you're sorting that out, I'm just going to respond to something that was put in chat. Uh, so Alison is new to Notion. Is there an easy way to learn formulas? Um, the easy, there are... That, that is subjective. <laughs> that, that's very subjective. Um, the, the way I would best learn formulas is take a template from someone. Um, I've got plenty of templates up. Red Gregory has templates. Uh, ben Smith has templates. Just take templates and look at the formulas and put, pull things out, see if it works, put things in, see if it works, and just just dissect and play around with formulas. It's the, it's the best way to learn is just to 
just take it apart, rebuild it, see if you can rebuild it. I do have a couple of videos explaining how formulas work roughly. Um, so maybe start watching a couple of those to give yourself an idea of how things like structurally, structurally work when it comes to properties and using two equals instead of one. Um, if you're familiar with Excel, the transition is quite quick. Um, but formulas can go from simple addition, i.e. cell one, add cell two, to using regular expressions and numerous arguments. So, yeah, there, there is there is a big scope in formulas. But to start with, yeah. it's simple maths. Just one, add one. My question is, if you're new to Notion, why do you want to use formulas? That's the question I immediately ask when everyone says, oh, how do you use formulas? My question is, why do you use form? Why do you want to use them? If you want to use them because me and Danny use them, don't use them. Because we're, we're just, well, I can't speak for him, but I'm just lazy. The reason why I use formulas is so I don't have to figure things out myself. And that it's, it's once you get your system in place and you've molded it into what you want, that's when formulas become useful. Like, once you know what your system's designed to do, that's when you should start having fun with formulas rather than trying to just go, formulas are really cool and let's go straight to formulas, learn how to create your databases, connect relations. Like that is... Um, get, get the fundamentals. Yeah, get the fundamentals down first before you use formulas and if you want to skip to formulas because i'm someone who loves to jump the gun a little bit on things why <laughs> why do you want to use formulas what do you want to solve with formulas can it be solved with something else and if I, th not, I think to i think to add on to that solving like what what do what problem do you have that a formula will solve and not just formulas like what problem do you have that notion can solve when it yeah. comes to using notion and people are like how do i start well what problem do you have that notion can solve otherwise you see people start with notion and then they're like well what do i do now <laughs> what do yeah. i build because you could do so much yeah, you want to know what your problem is, what your needs are for your system, in particular, what you need your system to do. Because um, when you first get started in Notion, it's just like, oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. And then you end up with hundreds of databases that are so... They don't serve any purpose apart from being there. <clears throat> and so it's better just to go, what do you need? Find a focus where you want to go. And yeah, there's plenty of resources. Red Gregory as well. Someone's put in the comments as well yeah. as Dan. Even I have some formulas, some really simple formulas um, on my YouTube, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's loads of different ways to learn formulas. It also comes down to the, I, I don't want to say teacher because we're not teachers. We're like just individuals showing. Um, but Red Gregory's style of video is different to my style of video, which is different to August's style of video, which is different to Will Nutt's style of video. So all of us teach the same thing, but in different ways. Um, so yeah, it, it's going to be very individual, but uh, homesick. It looks like you're ready. Can I uh, share the screen? There's nothing sensitive on there at all. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's okay. I'm just cleaning up a little bit. Uh, this with the formulas, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, a math guy, right? So uh, I've tried. I really tried to, to create formulas myself. And let's say when Ray Gregory does it and when you do it, uh, uh, it's kind of quite easy to, to comprehend what it's all about and why the things are as they are while you're doing them. But as soon as I maybe try to do something myself, you know, I'm lost. I just don't don't have the brains for that. But I did exactly as you said. I picked up some templates and uh, some some easy uh, formulas. Uh, I do have something about let's say uh, after see so many days can connect to this guy again. Uh, reminders kind of thing. Or, or is it uh, overdue? And if it's not overdue, so basic stuff, you know, I might do. But I, I really manage quite well without anything with formulas at all. Yeah, it's always like that. really I mean, don't need formulas. I think either borrow from somebody or buy a good template for somebody. I always tell people to buy because I bought a lot of stuff. I bought Marie's course, right? It, it, it's an expensive course, but it's it's great. It costs just as much as as, as Tiago Forte's, uh, you know, uh, building a second, second brain. brain. 
Yeah, and then you know, I bought some templates. I bought uh, Red Gregory's uh, template, uh, which I'm maybe I'm not even sure if I'm going to use it. But you know, she's doing so much for free, you know, and and. Uh, I have a plan of like, like a buying a template out of maybe each prolific notion uh, uh, content creator because I mean you guys are doing an amazing job you know it's so much inspiration and everything it's really great of course. cool yeah okay so I'm sharing here what you what you guys are seeing it's it's a, a bit of a mess in Evernote where I moved everything from notes that were scattered all around the notion place because when I decided, okay, I'm moving to Notion and I'm maybe considering uh, starting a YouTube channel, either when I get retired or during the time I'm doing this. And it just, actually, when I wrote all this, I didn't have anything of a video set up. Uh, I was just starting with my videography part. I used to do photography, but video is a totally different game, right? To get the quality, to get the lights, to get everything, it's an investment. But all of a sudden, like a, a year and a half later, man, I've got all the stuff. Now I could basically start, which this is an, an idea board or a note for the uh, YouTube channel that's going to be called Mac Attack. And it's Homesick Mac's attack on everything that's got to do with the guitar playing within my styles that I'm good at, uh, within musicianship, musical business, whatever, right? So I'm planning to do that. So I collected all these ideas here. And let's say this is a, this part that you see now, that this is not so organized, but this part was okay. This, is, this would be, let's say, each one of these is actually an idea for, for, for a YouTube video. So each one of these would be a video. This would be videos. All this equipment, accessories, ideas for blog posts that are connected to those videos. Everything is here. Everything is ready to be... Uh... Oh, when it comes to healthy musician, you, you know what my background is, Danny? Uh, because I you're know. in uh, uh, sports and uh, that kind of stuff. I'm a physiotherapist from the beginning. And I'm an old uh, volleyball player. And uh, actually, I, I got my degree as a physiotherapist, but I never worked because I just a musical career just took over. And I just went on touring. But It's uh, kind of what's happening to me. I'm a, I'm a sport, sports coach, uh, sports student, turned tech business person, yeah. entrepreneur. <laughs> Yeah. So basically, that's it. So now I'm I'm trying to find the way to 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 put all this into Notion, right? And uh, uh, the thing is that I still haven't decided on should I just have one large database like let's say Thomas Frank does, and, and he just puts uh, all the ideas and everything, every video, no matter if it's an idea or whatever, he just puts it into the, just this one database, and then decides this is an idea. I'm working on this. I, you know filmed it i published it and whatever it could be easily down there so that would be the, the easiest part uh, or easiest way to do it but then uh, somebody just said that oh, maybe you could create a, a dashboard with like a three different databases one of them could be uh, guitar tips for beginners one could be uh, like open tunings uh, videos what could be and I said, I said no it's maybe easier to have one large database and then just filter it and uh, maybe do the properties with the, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, What's so the, the way, what do you guys I was going to say the way I would approach it is have a master task database or master projects database, master notes database, just a database to store it and then filter the views elsewhere. Uh, so my, my notes database is, it, it's just one notes database that has everything, all the ideas for all the blogs, the videos, everything. Plus all the notes are from my learning or podcasts, like everything that I capture is in that one database. And depending on the properties I have, i.e. the metadata I have in that database, that allows me to filter those views in the spaces. So if, for example, it's a video and I know it's going to be YouTube, I can relate that note to my YouTube area. Okay. Then in my YouTube area, I can filter for YouTube. And same with blogging. If I attach the idea to blogging, it will appear in blogging and all the other areas associated. So I can filter my notes database for the tag of the area relation. Uh, and then inside there, if there, if for example, I've got the video idea and then I've made a video from that, the project that that's in the note will be related to the note. So that means in my YouTube area, I can filter for 
Note has YouTube area and does not have a project, which means I still need to action the note because any note that's got a project means I've already done the video, but it's still stored in my metaphorical archive of notes um, rather than just deleting it. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually hmm. something I've spoken to Thomas Frank about as well on Twitter with his note taking is his note taking system currently is three databases and there is some clunky stuff around with it. I did do a video explaining how I would approach it. Um, but I was yeah, talking to I, him. I think I saw, I saw that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I spoke to Thomas about it um, and he, he liked the way I did it. It just didn't quite work with the way he envisaged like the Evernote style of structure, which is it's everyone's view. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he's he's trying to work out how to get a just a one notes database, and he hasn't sort of like managed to get there yet. Uh, I know he's working yeah. on it, but yeah. So yeah, I would I, I would lean yeah. towards one database, but sometimes you do need two. Jonathan, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? So um, <clears throat> I have a notes database, but for me because I take an awful lot of courses. So online education is a big thing for me. Um, I actually have my own separate like courses database. So it starts in my notes. It funnels into my notes. Um, if it's just a general idea and like, I'm not going to work on it for a while, I keep it in the notes and, and, and file it in the respected area like, like Danny does. But if it's a course I know I'm going to work on, um, it goes into my course database. And then I have a full, like I have a full template, which is like my course junkie, like whole entire system where basically I, I used to have an awful lot of courses that I bought and never finished for whatever reason it might be, whether it be, I forget I had it or whether it be, I get distracted because I've got two kids and who knows what else, or I just forget. <clears throat> and so I created a whole system just to track all of my courses and I create my notes inside of the courses. If they become useful and like I'm going to reuse them somewhere else, I take them out of my course notes and into an actual note. I I now use the um, the backlinks to add that, change that text into a note and then I put yeah. it in the database. That opened a lot of possibilities, this with backlinking, definitely. Yeah. What is that all about? I'm not a fan of backlinks. <laughs> no, I'm not either, but they do exist and they're useful for very quickly creating pages, like sub pages. I like the fact that that's the not backlinking, that's inline page creation. Oh, fine, it is inline page creation, but it's an inline page creation from another page, which you can then put in another page. And I think that's quite cool. Oh, it is. It Definitely. is, but it's not backlinks. I agree. It's not backlinks, it's not Rome. Yet. Yet. It, it, may, it may be, but... Uh. Uh, I, I don't think Notion will catch up with Rome, uh, but they're definitely challenging Rome <laughs> quite quite heavily. I, think, I don't think yeah. they need to catch up. That's the thing, because Rome is such a different app. Mm. Like, it, it's it's like I, I've used Rome in the past. Um, it's actually helped me to use Notion better because Rome is very free there is no like limits and restrictions it's just like you create a page here and create a page there and create a page anywhere yeah. like do what you like um which is great when you're not think when you just want to jot down really quick ideas great when you're not thinking <laughs> that's exactly what i was going to say but i don't want to offend any rome people here because but like for me i like having that structure otherwise i'm just storing notes for the sake of storing notes I think that's where you and I agree, Danny, because like mm -hmm. if you're just going to store notes for the sake of them and not going to use them, what's the point of just storing them? They've always got to come. They've always got to have some use and you want to capture the information and turn it into something else. Comes back to that strategic ignorance. Yeah. Like if, if you're not going to use it or remember it for something, why do you need to keep it? Like if, if you've forgotten something, <laughs> that'd be funny. Just Google it. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, precisely. You got the answer to something. I know. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't try it. I didn't try Rome uh, at all. It's just, it's my brain doesn't work that way. I'm a bit more structured uh, right. when it comes to, to the visual part. And I understand why it works well. And I've seen people using it. And I've seen some videos and I've seen, you know, Red Gregory you know, jumping around in Rome notes. And then I've seen the, this talk with, with the uh, CEO of uh, of Rome, 
Uh, there was yeah a, with Tiago you know, somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and th that's great, right? For 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 those who who you know function that way. But with me, it's like a, it's a big picture, strategic mm. ignorance. That's a really good expression. I wrote it down actually. <laughs> yeah, did you I put did. it in I mean, your notes database in Notion? What? Sorry. Did you put it in your notes database in Notion? <laughs> uh, no. No, I just put it uh, on a. I have my um, iPad in front of me, and I'm just writing some notes and jotting down, and then I'll see what to do. Maybe I should just go through this because I wrote something, and um, oh, that's right. For my retreat students, there's things. This thing I have a people database. Hey, Danny, give me the share. Okay. Yeah, um, just, you, you, I, I forgot. You I, yeah, I stopped sharing because I. Uh, uh, wait a minute, just a second. Well, well, I'm just going to answer a couple of things that came into chat. Uh, so sure. Paolo asked, so how can you have all the entries of a given table into another one that is linked to it? Um, I'm not 100% sure what that question is, is driving towards. The way I would perceive that question is how can you see information in two places at once? Is that how you would see that, John? No, I think it might have been to do with the tasks because, of course, you have your tasks area with your tasks database inside of it. You can see multiple ones. That's what I think, he, but I, yeah, I I'm not sure. Um, what I'm going to go with is create linked databases. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much it. So if you want to see the, the same data from a table, create linked database so you can have the same database linked twice, three times, as many times as you want. And then you can filter those different database views for different things. You could have a gallery view, or in my case, a calendar view of your tasks, and then a list view of your tasks. Um, so play around with linked databases would be my, my go-to for that. Uh, and then another one that came in as well, before we go back to, to the notion is from, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to say that because I don't think I'm going to say that right. <laughs> From the Mo past on screen right now. Yes. Modar26? We'll go with that. Um, so uh, for a second, they thought they were interviewing Steve. Apparently, you look like Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody told me that before. <laughs> okay. I wish I had the money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, does anyone know how to put a stopwatch slash timer function in Notion? Uh, mm. Yes, there you can embed any stopwatch timer from Google. Indify. <laughs> the, what, what was that one? Indify. Indify.co. There's actually a um, <clears throat> stopwatch countdown feature. Yeah, I mean, there are so many things. I mean, you, I know I know Indify do one, but then I know you can also embed, oh, I can't remember what it's called. There was another one on Product uh, Product Hunt um, that was a specifically, I think it was like a Pomodoro timer um, for, for for Notion, which you can change the, the times for. And then you can embed anything from, from Google or YouTube or anything like that. So lots of different options out there. Right, so let's let's add you back to screen. You are You are back on. All right, so uh, in this guitar retreat thing that I'm doing, you know, there is a list of people who are attending, and right now I'm using Insightly, uh, which is a CRM uh, application, and I've used it since 2012, I think. And it's online, and it's great, it works really nicely. But now when I have Notion, and I have this uh, beginning of a people database, right, where I just, you know, gathered, Everybody that I have contact with, uh, and there are uh, properties connected to uh, lots of stuff, right? Uh, okay, there's a for formula, right? That uh, if I forget their birthday, if I ever want to write it down or something. But basically, this is what, and you guys are here as well. Here's Danny, here's uh, Jonathan. So, right? There we but go. Basically, nice. yeah. So, I've got so my circle photo as well in there. Make, Let's make see what I got on 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 on, uh, on John. That's right. So, jstewartuk.com. Oh, that's my yeah. Cool. I know. Yeah, that. yeah. that's one right. And then You're famous notion. Yeah, 
You see, John, I credited you. Notion expert, music background, no info on that yet, because I'd like to know more about your musical background and what you're doing, what style you're doing and all that. <laughs> That'd be cool. Guitar yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I play guitar, um, mainly jazz. I also play piano. There is a piano in the background, which you can't quite see. And I sing as well. Oh, that's great. Good. I can't do any of that. <laughs> well, do you feel better now, Dan? <laughs> well, you have like two teachers on here. Like exactly. Two. And you had one last week as well. So, <laughs> no this now. So, who yeah. would like to see Three guitar teachers guitar in two lesson? weeks? Who who would like to see Danny have a guitar lesson live? Um <laughs> On stream, oh, <laughs> that'd be that? great. I want to be a part of that. Probably covered in dust and probably broken because I've dumped stuff on it. But <laughs> oh, don't say things like that. The guitarist in the Oh man, I think he's got no, my really. on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what do you use <sighs> your database for? Just attaching like content for, or? Uh, well, it, actually, I was thinking about making, a, there are loads of videos right now about making a Notion uh, kind of CRM uh, uh, type app. But I, I just have like, let's say my, my mailing list is, is about 150 people. Uh, but most of them has you know, bought something from me or have attended my guitar retreat, right? And uh, it's kind of people who are circulating. That's my network. And uh, it's, it's a great, you know, bunch of people that I know. And I, I have almost all of them on my Facebook, in my address book. So I don't need to create something like this. But it would be cool maybe for them to, because I will have pictures of almost everybody who ever attended my, my retreat. And they agreed on, yeah, it's okay. So you can put our pictures over there. It's, it's fine. So uh, since it's only going to be for them, right? And uh, the, sh the shared page that they access, and maybe they would be cool t to make a kind of a look at like this and then have their email addresses so they can keep in touch if something happens or whatever. So maybe it's going to be cool for them to see because in, in Cycli, I can see exactly who went which year, right? And I don't have that in Notion. So it's, uh, you know, tagging, uh, let's say uh, a member of the retreat could be this and I can just have a property of which year of the retreat they went. And I mean, it could be done really, really you could, nicely. You could have like a retreat database, which is templated based on like what you have, because it looks like you have a similar setup each year. Yeah. yeah. So you could have that as a template. Yeah. And then <clears throat> so you'd have like a retreat database. Mm hmm. And then you would be able to link in like the song lists for that year instead of having it as tags. I think you've got it as tags yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So I would have like a retreats database mm -hmm. or it could just be a project in your project database if you really want to streamline it. But mm -hmm. you can have a retreats database and then have a yeah. template and do it like that. And then you can connect it to yeah. the people as well. Did, did any of you ever heard of Insightly? Did you use it? Did you know? Did you, do you know about it? Because it's so intuitive. It's a sidebar where you can just have projects, which are my retreat dates, right? It's usually like two groups each summer, and each of those is a separate project. And to those projects, I have connected my contacts so I can see exactly who went when. And you can gather that. You can just search for tags. You can search for the retreat year. And, and I know I can do that all in Notion as well. So, so I'm... I'm you know, I'm thinking about that. How could I do that? How could I put this uh, in in one big page where every, everything resides? I've I've just written it down because what I've what I've been doing is looking at other applications. So PipeDrive is uh, a CRM that I had to look at, and basically what because I I know how to build stuff on Notion. I when I see an app, I'm like. I could build that in Notion and I just I exactly. just sit there and like I, I could add this database and put these and what I did with my CRM template is I literally looked at PipeDrive, I looked at a video explaining PipeDrive and just recreated PipeDrive in Notion. Yeah. Um, doing I'm, that click up. Sorry? 
I'm doing the same with ClickUp. Is it ClickUp? I can never remember what it's called. Yeah. ClickUp, click click Asana, yeah, Trello, whatever. ClickUp yeah. click click is a project management app. Um, but yeah, no, like I'm going to do a video explaining sort of like essentially the principles. But uh, for those of you that don't know, I've been uh, tweeting. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would suggest it because uh, you'll find, basically find out what, what my thought process is. Um, but uh, I'm thinking of uh, exploring different apps on stream. Uh, because uh, it's, essentially, it's a, it's a learning process, and uh, yeah, th those yeah. of you that don't like swearing, um, I may swear yeah. in those sorts of streams. Because yeah. when I'm learning, <laughs> when I'm learning a new app, the amount of times I get frustrated or irritated about making the same mistake. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I'm I'm thinking of uh, streaming my learning process in different apps. I think Rome will probably be the one I do. I say next because I went through Taskade during the week, but I didn't stream okay. that. Um, and I will probably basically take a, a beginner's view at Rome because I've seen I've seen people talk about Rome and I've seen a couple of people using it, but I, I have no idea how it works. I just know that you can query stuff. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah. And you can backlink things with the brackets. And the reason I know yeah. it's the brackets is because Notion added brackets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I was like... Yeah. What, what uh, I do like, what I do like about Rome is this little part of that you can set a link. Let's say if, if you watch, uh, let's say the screen, right? And in the middle of the screen, you have these two basic columns, but they're not visible. Let's say you, you just write something down. Then this link can open in the sidebar that opens only mm -hmm. when you click on that one. That's a clever one. And yeah. Notion, Notion needs to give us the uh, possibility to, to, let's say, open two Notion windows that can drag and drop between those two. That would be a lifesaver for, for many people. You know? yes. I yeah. can't do that right now, right? No, no, you can't. You can you, open you would have to. You'd have well, to like, so I normally have two windows. Like when I was doing my dissertation, writing my dissertation yeah. in Notion, I had three, sometimes four Notion windows open, but I couldn't yeah. just click and drag. I had to yeah. cut it and paste it. Um, I mean, it it worked, but it, it still yeah. it would still be nice to have that sidebar pop up so you can you can sort of see two things at once rather than having to click the page, go into the page, and then go back out of the page to see the information. Um, yeah, and sure. I know I know transclusion is something Notion are thinking about um, and potentially working on, but yeah. I mean that's that's something for the future. And obviously, it doesn't work now. Yeah, I wrote them. You know, I had contacts with uh, support people, and uh, I told them that. And there's one more thing that I'd like to have in Notion, and let me sing you about it. Ooh. Yeah. Good. You ready? All right, here's a Notion song about a thing that I need and crave the most in Notion, right? Uh, let me just warm up a second. Notion, you just click around, you never lose the track to where you're bound. But I'm just wondering if it's so hard to code to please pour me, just give me an offline mode. Now, won't you tell me how long do I have to wait? Can I get you now? La must I hesitate? Yeah, it's in works. Yeah. <laughs> Right. It's an old, right. it's an old yeah. blue song. Yeah. The comments. This, 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 this needs to be like tagged and shown to Notion. We, we, Danny, we're going to have to face this in the Notion <laughs> project. Yeah. Like that much work. What, what is, is on I YouTube? Was, it's on I was, YouTube. I was, I was thinking about making a, a, a you know YouTube video about because I have like seven verses, uh, uh, and one of those is. Uh, uh, not actual anymore because they gave gave us these back linking, and uh, yeah, I have many verses, right? I, I need and to. I'm, uh, really I'm not sure about. Want to hear them? <laughs> John's like, give me more, Uncle. <laughs> <Yeah, well, laughs> I don't know. There's this one uh, that I like quite a lot. It's got, 
Uh, yeah. This stupid little song might irritate few. I just hope it don't bother you. Hey now, <laughs> friends, don't you sit in vain. Jump on that newfound notion train. Won't you tell me how long? Won't you have to wait? Yeah. Because this song is actually an old uh, hesitation blues uh, from, I think, 1800 something. And very old song. It's a traditional and it's been done in zillions of versions whatever and this kind of a swingy one that i usually play with the original lyrics right and it's a love song basically how long do i have to wait must i hesitate to get my gal so i thought okay this is well for yeah <laughs> definitely, definitely gonna have to clip that and put it in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah like yeah. well i can't play guitar or sing <laughs> no. I, uh, I played this one uh, when it was really fresh, uh, uh, yeah, a couple of months ago when we had this uh, uh, Zoom talk with a uh, uh, Notion, Ma uh, Notion Mastery course. Yeah, I remember Marie uh, talking about it. Yeah, yeah she, I think she even put the screenshot on, on, the, on Twitter or somewhere. But, I, you know, I'm lazy. I, I should really you know, just nail the song and, and do a video about it. It's just, a, you know, it's a cool thing. Yeah. Definitely. Well, if yeah. if you do, make sure you tag me wherever you put it, whether it's Twitter, you <laughs> tag, will. Tag, me tag me. I will. I will. Tag me and it will be shared. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, please. I'll do it. Okay. I'll, I'll put it on a list on, on, my, on my most important next musical Definitely. project. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Good. Great stuff. Wow. We, we yeah. have like, like reached a whole nother level of stream right now, Danny. I know, and it's, it's not copyright music either. <laughs> no, exactly. Music that it, it can't be copyrighted. <laughs> that's a good thing with me because whatever I put on YouTube, uh, any song that I play, that's more than seventy years old, so I'm fine. And there are no copyrights. It's either a traditional or it's a blues song, or it's an original thing that I did. Right? So what the hell? Actually, that that's a good point. This is a, kind of to to both of you. Like when it when it comes to like background music, uh, just in in general, when it comes to copyright, um, my videos at the moment don't have any background music. I'm trying to play with it, but finding non copyright music is almost impossible. <laughs> but you yeah, can find it, but you've got to pay for a lot of it. Um, yeah, and you yeah you can spend hours looking for music, um, and it's just like. Have it, having a notion specific song would be so cool to have in the background of anything. <laughs> so cool to have in the background yeah. of anything. Yeah. And any notion creator would, would want that. <laughs> Just mm. look at a theme tune. Oh, there you oh, go, John. Sure. John, for the, uh, for the podcast, Notion Nerds podcast, what you got to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I've had a, a, co a couple of questions come in the form. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> what are you giggling at? What have I got to do now? <laughs> uh, I've had a couple of questions before, so I'll go through those. Um, is this a question? Wait. Well, it's gone in the form, but I'm seeing if it's a question or if it's just a... No, that's not actually a question. They've just said lots of stuff. Okay. Um, I'll mm -hmm. have a look at the second one. Uh... Quick, another verse. Quick, another verse. Cool for us. <laughs> um i might not be able to attend the stream so this was given before stream um lots and lots of stuff this is like an essay uh my notes usually contain lots of mathematical expressions and derivatives uh more stuff more stuff paper can you help okay so what they want to do is turn math notes which they're writing on paper into notion flashcards for space repetition. The way I would approach that is just take a picture or an image of whatever your math notes are, make sure it's clear and then use Anki or use Quizlet or use the flashcard system that you've made. Um, because I mean, like you've said in your long question, it basically putting maths into notion is not fun. It's not easy. It's not quick. It's much easier just to handwrite them. Um, so I would handwrite them. If you're doing it on iPad, then just take the iPad image and put it into Notion. If you're doing it handwritten, just take a picture on your phone and go into Notion um, and then put that as the card. Uh, that's all I can think of. What, what, what do you guys think? Same? 
same sort of approach. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if 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 you would put it into a database, I could. Uh, I I used to send some written stuff from the the iPad to uh, ideas notes a database as an image as yeah. as a right. But there are some. Uh, what's it called? Um, writing recognition software. Uh, I'm using Nebo. Uh, Nebo is great to, to write on iPad with because that can transcribe directly in, into a text, real text. Your handwriting into text while you're doing it. So you can do the corrections if you need whatever. And then you can just, you know, select that text and just uh, paste it into Notion wherever you want. So it's, it's, it's a two step process at least. I know that. I, I would imagine musical notes are obviously we spoke about I don't know whether you watched last week, but mm. musical notes into Notion, you can't do that yeah. naturally or natively. Yeah. yeah. Same same no, sort of process. Can't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I, I let's say I, I don't read music. I, I never, you know, write down music. I either record uh, in the early days with with cassette tapes and all that, you know, I had some sorted cassette tapes like uh, ideas about this about that and i was just listening through that and i you know my first thing was to buy a cassette player that had a counter so i knew exactly which on which cassette tape where at which number you know a song or idea was so now we really have this luxury of being able to do that you know what i'm using just press record it's an ios app for the for the iphone and that can transcribe your speech into text while you're doing that and you just move that anywhere you want so actually what i did there is that i recorded uh, a musical idea i just played it into the app and then i spoke what it's about which fret which tuning whatever and then i just took everything all that just sent to notion with a share that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's I, I'm going to show my age a little bit. I'm I'm just old enough to know what a cassette is. <laughs> like just. <laughs> oh, it's man. one of those things. I'm like I've heard of it, but I've never really experienced man, much of it. They're coming back. They're coming back. I have a band in in Malmo in, in southern Sweden, and they release all their music on cassette tapes. And they have a, a company in the UK that's printing everything, and they have their own record company, and it's released digitally on, you know, Spotify everywhere else as well. But they have kind of uh, 500 cassette tapes that they still print. <laughs> that's cool. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I know, Jonathan, you spoke about this last week with the with the images, with the the notes and the musical stuff. Have you, have, yeah. Have you, have you come up with anything else like since then, when it comes to like taking musical notes or anything from that stream, really? Either, or are you still the same? Yes, I said musical stuff because I don't know the terminology. It is PDFs and embedding, and like there are apps you can do to embed. I've not actually tried it. Um, sound splice or something, which can have like musical notation being played inside of it but honestly no i just use pdfs and stuff like that for musical notation or i'm very much like homesick mac and just hear it and play it <laughs> yeah i'm very I'm much auditive i'm yeah. auditive I, I never studied music you know i'm self-taught and uh in those days let's say when i started it was 1975 uh and then i was like 15 and we had lp records right gramophone yeah. players so you just have to replay it and you know, when i started playing this style that i'm within now like blues country and then you you got a record you bought two of them because you're going to worn it out uh, either the record or the needle because you, you just go back and back and listen to the same two seconds again to be able to yeah. oh that's that lick oh okay that's how he's doing that and then you practice on that so i uh we didn't have that no, not, even not saying that, that, I didn't even like acknowledge it until you said that. I didn't even acknowledge that the record would wear out. But oh, it, yeah. it, it just didn't occur to me. But now that you've it said did. it, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it would. Or the needle. I mean, I, I think I, I, I had to replace needles at least three times a year on my gramophone player. And I didn't even have a good one. It, it was just like, you know, what you had at home and you, you played it. Yeah. And then the VHS came, video tapes uh, in, let's say, mid-80s that you could order from the States. But that, yeah, 
wasn't an option because it was too expensive. So I, basically I'm self-taught and uh, I, I trained my ear to recognize, oh, this is open tuning, no, this is regular guitar, this is resophonic, this is with a capo, oh, this shouldn't be like, I broke many strings before I understood, oh, that's an open tuning, shit, you can't go with that string so high, Toom, that, oh, okay, that was that string. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take the second one. Yeah, whatever. Well, I've I've only got one ear, so I definitely would struggle. <laughs> yeah, Be, being deaf in one ear does not help. Um, so when it when it comes to oh, we got the guitar. I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> no, 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 don't shut no, up. No, I, no, no, no. I, I thought about one thing. If I if I let's say play like a background music that's not copyrighted, and you guys talk. And I just back off a little bit with my guitar so it's not too loud in the stream, right? So it could be like almost like a prepared uh, musical background for your chat. So go on talking. Oh, that's, that's, that's so cool as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have a light music which really different your position. Also, love notion. That's really cool. Anyway, we talked about that. Are you? I don't even know what to say. I'm just listening to the music. I just want to sit back and listen. <laughs> it's so nice. It's so you know that you know the humming music I had in my earlier videos. Yeah. 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 So that that was the that was the best thing I could find that was consistent because a lot of a lot of songs have like peaks and troughs, obviously for the yeah whatever the term is, the storytelling of of the song. Um, yeah. And when you've got that in a tutorial. It, it just was really off-putting. You suddenly get this massive drop in the middle of me explaining yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a massive catch. downbeat. And you're just like... Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do you remember? That, that was my first contact with you because I was so... Uh, well, I, I didn't want to nag because, Jesus, all you guys doing these videos for free on YouTube, it, it's so much effort, so much work behind it. And then we come and nag, oh, the music is too loud. I mean, give me a break. But the thing is that we are playing, uh, we're doing this, this stuff for people who maybe are sometimes... Uh, uh, have a you know a condition it doesn't have to be a disease it can be this uh, me which is like a, a concentration um, problem with people that it, it can be the least least sound uh besides what they're concentrated on so, so they can't listen anymore because they they can only cope with one uh, audio source at the time and that's it so there is this there are loads of videos on on youtube about how loud the music should be in in uh, a comparison to the voice uh, volume, let's say in Final Cut Pro. And I, I did a test a, a couple of days ago when I made a video for, for, for a friend and I just, he, he told me, that, man, that music is too soft. I, I want to hear more of that. Uh, okay, I thought it was too loud. So it's very individual, right? Yeah. So you, you don't really know how to do it. And then the beat about the music. If you're talking fast, if you're kind of explaining something, then music cannot be rhythmical it has to be very laid back it's like let's say you talk very fast right and then if i play like a right it's going very slowly it's it's, it's uh, kind of not yeah. disturbing your rhythm because you cannot have two similar rhythms in your speech and the music in the background i, I did a video for for a company here and uh, they wanted to present, you know, the guys working at the, at the company, you know, and they want a kind of punchy music, right? Of course, I found it. And there, there are a couple of sites that really give you free, royalty-free music, and it's not copyrighted. You just put it in the YouTube description, and you can use it, right? And I found a Rocky song. They just loved it. So, yeah, that was great. Put it higher, higher. Okay. <laughs> it's a rock song. That, that then, was, that's uh, exactly it. I mean, there's so many people in the guys, comments. If you guys talk now, right, and I play like uh, like this, uh, maybe even if I back off, I go like one meter away from the microphone, right? So. Oh, wow, that's much quicker. Yeah. You, 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 you struggle to think. It's like, you're like, I need to keep... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's not working, right? Yeah. And, Is it something with the... Um, so with the, with the comments, like some people said that they wanted 
it louder. Some people said it was fine. Some people said yeah. they wanted it quieter. And some people said, just get rid of all of it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> so I got, I got rid of it. I was like, there we go. Just, just clear it out. And I'm going to play around with it and test, test some things out in the future because yeah. I mean, you never know, like so maybe I'll put, put music in some and not in others. We've got to experiment. Yeah. Otherwise you never know. But, but I've seen, I've seen some rhythmical stuff uh, while the video is going on and the, the, the person is not talking about it. It's, he's just showing what he's doing on, on the screen. Then the music can be rhythmical. It can be like a, a Fine, but then when you start talking, then it needs to either back off really, really to, to be become very low. But I, I think with every kind of electronic beats could be relaxing. That's another thing. This is a real instrument played, which electronic music is also, it's an instrument as well. It's a tool, but the beats within electronic music, electronic can be very relaxing. I, I experienced that myself when I went, uh, I was in Berlin, uh, a couple of years ago and all 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 shops in in this you know shopping area they all had very similar beat which was quite loud in the loudspeakers when you get into the shop but it's not disturbing it's very nice it's like you know, this ableton masters you know in germany there are many of those and that's incredible that's i got hooked on that I like shit i gotta learn this stuff because i can play bass guitars and drums you know i can fool around on a piano i can create a background that's fine no problem but uh, you know to have this uh, midi keyboard and to dive into you know beats in ableton and all that that's another beast andrew Sometimes. andrew huang <laughs> have you seen him on youtube exactly oh yeah yeah i've seen him yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, anytime yeah. anyone brings up music do you do you watch whatever person i'm like no i watch andrew <laughs> <laughs> andrew's my go-to uh, I, I watched uh, sanjay g he, he he's cool and a couple of other guys but that's totally new for me i just got my first uh, midi keyboard it's a small one it's it's a it's a baby this one right and it's bigger it, than me. It's bigger than what yeah, I got. It's incredible what you can do with this. Yeah. It's, it's just fantastic. Yeah. You, you fool around with that, Jonathan? Sorry? Are you fooling around with MIDI uh, controllers? Um, the piano right here is actually a MIDI piano, which plugs okay. in. It's oh, a right. Yamaha, which plugs in. I was a music producer before. Um, I did Notion. I did. He's, he's off now. He's off. He's gone. Um, I actually wrote music for video games for three four years yeah that's great I, I did that so yeah i've played full orchestras yeah. on that thing so. yeah play us something play us something on that piano oh no <laughs> yes <laughs> why not yeah. no no not after you no i'm i'm, I'm... <laughs> Oh come on! Uh, maybe maybe you give us something off stream. I'm I'm sitting there like I can play the football whistle. Where you just blow it. <laughs> <laughs> One two. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've uh, hey. we've diverted well away from Notion. Um, yeah, I know. Have, have you uh have you have you covered most of your space? I think we have. <laughs> yeah. And you just like forgot. Like, have you been just? I don't know. Music. What? What? Uh, <laughs> no. I was, I was looking at the title of the stream and I was thinking, oh yeah, it's got Notion in it, doesn't it? Yeah. We were yeah. about yeah. the last well, time. Oh, well, no. <laughs> well, the idea was uh, for me to show you guys how I'm using it, and mm. I'm in the middle of you know deciding on okay, because I, what I need to do. Uh, from now on is to decide on this YouTube thing to, to do the database on that and my guitar treat needs to just move from inside it to Notion and I'm going to use your tip about uh, what you did with the pipeline right uh, I'm going to or pipe drive what did you call it, it was called pipe what pipe the CRM drive. thing yeah, or... yeah exactly yeah CRM. yeah that, that was yeah yeah so uh, I, I copied pipe drive into Notion uh, exactly yeah so I'm going to try to copy insightly into Notion Although they were really great. I mean, it was a free tier I had, and uh, I had so few records, you know, compared to other CRM users and big companies. So they just, they just let me use it for free. And I had great contact with them. So if anybody wants to 
pure CRM software that's that's free, that's in Cycly, they're great. And it's really it never, never glitched, not once. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing when it comes to, that's the thing when it comes to Notion, because it's a, a no-code app builder. Yeah. Take an exactly. app that already works or the system or principle that already works and just rebuild it. Um, and that's what I've actually done with quite a few of the, like my clients is they've got a system that's currently working in maybe three or four different apps like yeah. Excel, Google Drive, email and something else. Um, yeah. And I've just gone, OK, these are the processes you have and these are the friction points. Let's just rebuild what you've got in Notion and get rid of some of those friction points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rather than building from from scratch and just find trying to figure something out because that's too yeah. long. Yeah, well, we can agree on the love for Notion. It's it's really great. It's it's a revelation for me. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, so it's I, just great. I'm curious then in the in the future when it comes to YouTube, uh, are you going to start the channel like what, what's your target like before Christmas, after Christmas, or is it just something you just want to try and do yeah you know, i i know i know how much work it is and i streamlined my recording process where i can really uh recommend ATA mini pro because it can uh the ATA mini uh yeah it can also record but ATA mini pro can both uh, stream and record at the same time uh, as long as you have a monitor connected to it to the hdmi out but let's say that shortened uh, the, the the recording time per video for me when i'm sitting in front of the cameras and performing and i know that i if i'm going to record something that i'm playing and had to demonstrate i need to have three cameras and uh, that setup takes me like 20 minutes now after i've done i've done the retreat i had some mac attacks workshops that i uh, do online and uh, now i know i'm more confident now about the youtube channel than before because uh, I knew that if, if I record something with like two cameras, then it's, uh, you know, a lot of editing, at least five, six hours per video. And uh, now when you can record everything onto a hard drive through a to mini pro, you can have everything connected and then just put it, you know, in front of you, click the recording button and that's it. And then the editing process can be that you, you just need to maybe cut out the part when you just press the button to switch to cameras, right? The picture in picture thing, you, you can just hide that with a transition or something and that's it. And you get the pristine audio as well. So for anybody trying to do an instructional video, let's say playing guitar or something, that could be a good. So the idea is uh, not this year because I had to move so many things uh, uh, because of the COVID thing. Uh, mm. I lost some significant amount of money uh, for this summer because I had booked uh, festival appearances, uh, workshops. I was booked for the Blues Week in the UK, which was also canceled and lots of stuff. And, and, and it, it's a lot of money and that money needs to get in. So I need to work now this rest of the fall. I'm going to be doing some video productions that bring in money. And then I think I'll start in 2021 with a youtube channel it's going to be on a homesick mac uh youtube channel i have my own private youtube channel where i have all my retreat videos and all that but this is going to be like a mac attack youtube channel nice well yeah. when when that's up and running let us know and uh oh i will I'll uh, I'll definitely put the link in the stream. I don't know how the stream like because obviously this is, this will be archived in in the YouTube yeah. archive of videos. Um, yeah, sure. But yeah, I'm definitely going to have to have to have a look. <laughs> yeah, good guys. Uh, so that's uh, that's just over two hours. So uh, I feel like that's a, a good sort of uh, place to to uh, finish finish off the live stream. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk talk afterwards. Um, so have you got any sort of uh, last words you'd like to give to people watching? Either of I you? Have a, I have a last note <laughs> from me in a way. Uh, one more verse from the Notion song, right? Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Well, I may be right and I may be wrong. This roadmap people is taking much too long. Tell me now, Notion, what's on your path? But don't you fool around, I'm gonna do my math. Now won't you tell me how long do I have to wait? Can I get you now? 
Now must I hesitate? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. Hey, all right, greetings to all. Greetings to all. John, uh, anything to follow up? No. I can't <laughs> Go on, top that. <laughs> no chance. You said you could sing, right? With a cold. <laughs> yeah, with a cold. No. Um, so for the, for those of you that are still here, uh, we have Marie Paulin on next week. Oh. Uh, so she. She's, she's joining us for next week. So if you have any questions for, well, myself, John or Marie about any of our spaces, how we use Notion or literally anything Notion, uh, let us know either on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever. Uh, let us know. So uh, we are going to really nerd out next week in Notion. Um, it's going to be great fun. It's going to be yeah. great fun. Yeah. Um, Marie's great. So, yeah. She is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, un until then, uh, I'll see you, well, either either in a video comment or uh, next week. So That's bye, right. guys. Bye. All right. Bye.